People who don't know you, you know, how would you describe yourself? Yeah, uh, I'm a fifth generation resident of this community. My great great grandfather started a peach farm in Manteca in 1850. Uh, now I'm raising my seven month old daughter Lillian with my wife Pam and, and Tracy and never thought I'd do anything in politics, but really I'm just running because I think people in Sacramento and DC need to be reminded that California is more than San Francisco and Los Angeles, which they often don't realize. We'll back up a little bit again. Why did you decide to run in the first place? Yeah, so my brother was born premature. Uh, he spent the first two years of his life in and out of a hospital uh, and you know, had a healthcare bill 104 pages long when he came out for the last time and never thought I'd do anything in politics, was teaching uh, junior college, teaching folks how to start a business. But I saw my brother would lose his health insurance if the Affordable Care Act was repealed. And my member of Congress voted to do that. And I thought that was unforgivable and basically started a race against him because of that. And uh, we were able to win. And now we're trying to make sure that we're lowering the cost of health care, making sure everybody can see a doctor, as well as working on water issues and uh, all the other challenges that the Valley deals with. You know, why do you decide to run again? Yeah. You know, we still, we've made a lot of progress, but there's a lot more work left to go. Uh, we're in the midst of a drought, and California is still planning to ship Northern California water from here to Southern California. We're dealing with the cost of living. San Joaquin County has grown exponentially. People are still paying five, six dollars a gallon for gas. They're paying unaffordable costs for health care. And uh, you know, you've been dealing with public safety issues. People still don't feel safe. Uh, they feel like we don't have enough cops on the street. They feel like we're not dealing with crime as quickly as we should be. Uh, and so we have a lot of work to do to make sure that we're protecting the valley's water, lowering costs that families like mine are dealing with, and keeping everybody in our community safe. To that, your, your opponent is accusing you, you know, we've got an economy that's in shambles. We've got high gas prices right now. Um, you know, you're part of the status quo. You know, how do you respond to someone who says that? Well, look at our record. Uh, I have consistently voted to suspend the gas tax, which would take a dollar per gallon off of the prices that people are paying today. Uh, my opponent's done the opposite. He actually supports, supported raising the gas tax to what it is right now. And he said that suspending that gas tax would be quote unquote insignificant. I don't know anybody in our community who thinks it would be insignificant to take a dollar per gallon off of gas. Uh, he's also voted in his time as a county supervisor to raise the cost of life-saving medications at San Joaquin General. Uh, I've done just the opposite. I've worked to try to cap the price of insulin in a community where half of our residents are pre-diabetic or diabetic, that's absolutely essential. Uh, and so I think if you look at our record, you're still going to see a, a pretty sharp contrast in terms of standing up for what people in our community need. How do you um, connect with people that are feel that they're disenfranchised voters that feel like, you know, you're just a politician, you're from Washington now, um, how are you going to help me? You know, how do you break that kind of barrier with folks? You know, people are cynical and apathetic, and they have a right to be. Uh, look around. We have so much work to do. Uh, I think people feel like life hasn't necessarily gotten better, and they're right on a lot of dimensions. And so what we need to be doing is we need to make sure that we are showing the, that pain and that we actually have a plan to deal with it. Uh, and that's where we come to things like suspending the gas tax. That's where we come to protecting the Valley's water supply. Uh, you know, Sacramento is planning to take our water and ship it to the Delta Tunnel all the way down to Beverly Hills, that doesn't make any sense. And so we need to stand up for what's right in our region uh, and not be waylaid by the plans of, of frankly, partisan politicians on, on both sides. And, and you've gone after your opponent, Tom Patty, pretty hard on a number of issues. You know, people might define that as, as, as dirty politics. You know, are, are you afraid um, that you might be turning off voters who might be thinking to vote for you but like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to vote for that guy anymore. Well, we've been laser focused on the issues, and I think people deserve to know what they're voting for in an election. Uh, and if you look at something, whether it's you know, his investigation for bribery, most people who are under investigation for bribery hire a good lawyer. Uh, they don't run for Congress. And if you look at the votes that he's taken on the gas tax, on medications, you know, people deserve to know what they're actually going to expect if somebody is, is, is in office. Now, he's been cleared of the bribery. He says it's absolutely false. It never happened. I never spoke to anyone about, you know, funding a homeless shelter. He goes, it's not Patty's homeless shelter that uh, at all. He goes, it never occurred. And in fact, he says it was one of your staffers that put that out there. That wasn't true. How do you respond to that? That's not true. Um, but, you know, if he says he's innocent, then he should support making this investigation public. 
Uh, he doesn't. He wants to make sure that this investigation is secret, that people actually don't know the evidence. I think transparency is the best disinfectant, and I think voters deserve a, a chance to, to judge for themselves. You mentioned uh, some of the issues. What do you think the number one issue is right now with, with voters, and how do you think you can uh, help turn things around? You know, I think the most important issue for our community today is the cost of living. Uh, as I was saying, I, I raise my, I'm raising my seven-month-old daughter here. She's gonna be a sixth-generation resident of our community and it's not as affordable as when I was growing up. Uh, and I'm worried about what her future is gonna look like. Uh, people have long commutes in our community. People are driving four or five hours a day uh, and they're paying unaffordable prices at the supermarket, at the pump, in their electricity bills. We've been going after PG&E for some of the abuses in their pricing system as well. And we have to be focused on making sure that the Central Valley continues to be an affordable place so we can be raising my family as well as you know, all the other families that we have across our community. Instead of staying maybe in District 5 or District 13, running those districts, why do you decide to come to this district in particular? Like I said, my family roots here have been here a long time. I've had the privilege of representing Tracy and Manteca and Ripon, and we built a lot of relationships there. And I think, you know, this district makes a lot of sense. It, it, you know, San Joaquin County as a whole deserves a representative in Congress that understands our community that's accessible and present in every part of our area and that is actually focused on the issues that people care about, whether that's water, public safety, the cost of living, and, and everything else. What are some of your accomplishments that you, you're proud of in, in Washington right now? You know, there's a lot. I think probably the most significant personal accomplishment is the work that we did for our veterans. Uh, my grandfather served two tours in Vietnam. He had his life cut short by Agent Orange. He passed away when I was three years old. I barely had a chance to, to really know my grandfather. And for decades, Vietnam vets like him did not have their Agent Orange benefits covered. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. These are folks that served their, their uh, country in uniform. They came home and they were abandoned by their country. And so I worked. I worked with Republicans and Democrats to pass a bill expanding veteran benefits for folks uh, like my grandpa and tens of thousands of others. Now 50,000 Vietnam vets have access to, to Agent Orange benefits, including a lot of folks in our community who are being left behind. Finally, how do you convince voters who are on the fence to vote for you? You know, we've been very clear about our values. Uh, now, nobody's gonna agree with me on 100% of issues, but we're focused on making sure that we're making the right decision, independent of party line. 95% of the bills I've written are co-sponsored or been with somebody uh, on the opposite party, just trying to do what's right for our community. Uh, I'm focused on local issues. You know, you won't see me screaming at folks on cable news. I'm focused on water. I'm focused on transportation and jobs. And I'm focused on making the valley an affordable, safe place for people to live. And I think if folks actually see that record, hopefully they'll have uh, a chance to, to trust us.